louder. Okay, so here we turn it like this. Okay, here is a, I mean, it's a little bit, if you do not want to show off, then just your, your picture there. I just woke up, you guys don't want to see me. <laughs> so he, he just woke up, he said, because he's in, uh, yeah, in California, right? Yes, okay, sir. so that would be the opportunity to ask questions about singularity or if you have other questions about other topics and uh, we have 15 minutes for all kinds of questions. So feel free. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if... Can you hear me, Greg? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, I, it's a little muffled, so I may need to repeat it, but yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. this is uh, Luca Benedici from CSCS. Uh, so my question is, I, I, I looked at the, the latest updates in Singularity and I saw uh, that you included uh, an option or a feature to import Docker images. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Okay. I think, yeah, go, keep going, I'm sorry. Yes, so um, basically my question is related to this. So does, does it matter uh, the image, the base image that I use in my Docker container when I import it to Singularity, or are only those images supported by, uh, by Singularity the ones that can be ex uh, exported from Docker and imported into Singularity? Uh, so Christian, I'm gonna ask you if you can reach the end of that, I didn't hear the whole thing. Uh, okay. Should I move closer? Yeah, maybe if you move closer, that would be the easiest, okay. and uh, I don't have to. <laughs> have to ask. Okay. So, uh, so maybe again. Um, so I saw that um, the the import the, the the example you have on the web page with Docker export five Singularity import, and uh, since Singularity supports as for today, I think uh, Ubuntu, uh, Debian, CentOS. And, and maybe a couple more uh, uh, images. My question is, what happens if my Docker container is based on on an image or or, or a base image that is not directly supported by Singularity? Is, is uh, that a okay. problem or not? Okay, I understand your question. So I go back um, to the scene now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. But maybe Greg, could we could we get some some uh, context for this question? I mean. I think it's not clear to everyone what uh, what was meant by Docker export and Docker save and all this jazz. So maybe um, if you could take two sentences to introduce this Docker export and singularity import feature. Yes, definitely. I think that's a very good idea. So Docker export basically will export out a tar stream of the end result of the container. And singularity import pretty much does the exact opposite of that. It pulls in the uh, a tar stream uh, coming in from, from standard in. So what you end up with is a, uh, a, the ability to convert the operating system data, the image data from Docker and bring that into a singularity image. But it doesn't at the moment also bring in any metadata. So any commands or entry points or whatnot that you have to find in Docker, that will not be brought over as of yet. We are already working on that and we hopefully will have a solution for that uh, pretty soon. Uh, now, the question was uh, specifically about what uh, Linux distributions does Singularity support. So on the website, I talk about how to bootstrap um, and, and include recipes for bootstrapping uh, several different Debian variants and um, Red Hat variants. Uh, so those are what's supported now only because that's what I'm most familiar with. But any operating system that you can bootstrap with either Docker or with, with anything uh, that you can bring into, con that, that you can containerize is already supported with Singularity. So there is no um, Linux distribution uh, um, limitation with regards to what can you run within a container. Now even on a host, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, um, we are testing uh, and, and have Singularity running on older distributions as well as newer distributions. Right now, the oldest that I'm supporting is Red Hat 5 and Compatibles um, and similar, similar uh, Debian-based vintages. Uh, but for the most part, inside of a container, 
Uh, you can run anything you want. I mean, as an example, we just had a use case where somebody had a 17-year-old Red Hat Linux 8 system. Those of you who know, <laughs> remember Red Hat Linux before Enterprise Linux. Um, and we were actually able to containerize that even and have it run properly within Singularity. So there really is no, no limitations on what is supported uh, within a container. Okay, you just, you just need to know how to bootstrap it yourself then until we get the bootstrap supporting code into Singularity proper. And maybe could you elaborate one bit more on uh, the differences between uh, the Docker namespaces and how you do it with Singularity? I, I said a couple of minutes or no, the last or the one of the talks before, I said that you start with all the namespaces that the user uses. Oh, I can, I can get it, you go. And uh, you can start. You start with the user namespaces that the user currently is in, and then you can drop whatever um, your security requirements are to to get more or uh, less namespaces for for the Singularity app, right? Yes, that's exactly correct. Um, Docker will typically um, separate out all available namespaces on your system, where Singularity um, does it from the opposite direction. It's basically saying what namespaces do we need to separate for a particular application for that application to work properly. Remember, the, the, the use case of Docker and Singularity is a little bit different. I mean, Docker is basically trying to emulate a virtual machine. And uh, Singularity is basically just trying to make application stacks and workloads and environments portable. So there's a little bit of a different use case. And as a result, we, we have different um, uh, methods for, for separating out the namespaces. In specific, the namespaces that are separated out are also um, conditional. So for example, if you are running within a scheduled environment or you're running within a MPI environment, you don't necessarily want to separate out the PID namespace because there's various uh, negative repercussions by doing that. So if you are running within these environments, Singularity tries to be pretty smart and not share out or not separate out the PID namespace. Um, uh, but other namespaces like the mount, files, file descriptors, um, file system, etc., those are all always pretty much uh, separated out with Singularity. Yeah, okay, then I get it right even. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, more questions? Or not even related to Singularity, could be other questions as well. More infinite questions? No? <laughs> Is anybody using um, InfiniBand on a containerized um, HPC solution right now? Yeah, we are using one. We at CSCS, we have a cluster with InfiniBand and we, and we are using those. Um, but you, you use Shifter, right? No. Oh, you know, the, on the cluster we use, uh, we use different things. We even use Singularity on the cluster. Uh, so we use Docker, we use Shifter and Singularity and also Rocket. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but maybe my question is, is regarding the, the mechanism or, or maybe the development roadmap regarding the DMPI support that you have for different flavors other than, than open MPI uh, in terms of support from the singularity point of view. So M pitch, let's say M pitch based uh, MPI stuff. Did you catch that? I I think I caught all of it. It's basically, the, if uh, I'll, I'll, I'll restate the question just to make sure I got it right. Um, what is the support of different types of MPIs uh, with Singularity? Yes. Is that, was that it? Yes, yes, exactly, yes. Okay. Uh, so I've, I'm most experienced with OpenMPI, and we have a OpenMPI developer um, as part of the Singularity team. Okay. So I can tell you OpenMPI works really well um, now, with that said, it is the OpenMPI that is under development, so it is not the currently released OpenMPI. We need to wait for OpenMPI 2.1 to come out, which will probably be in the fall. If you need uh, MPI support before then with OpenMPI, uh, you basically have to run a development snapshot in order to get that, that support. Uh, now, as far as other MPIs, um, I don't run MPitch. Um, I haven't in, in, in a long time, but I do know a lot of people that, that have. Several of them have already tested with Singularity, 
and have basically given given the thumbs up that yes, this is already working, um, and it works from from using the same support model as OpenMPI, which is basically you invoke MPI run or MPI exec mm -hmm. from outside the container. So that way it knows how to reach the other nodes, it knows how to reach, um, um, you can utilize your InfiniBand, it knows how to reach the file system. So the MPI command is being launched directly from the physical host um, mm -hmm. or the node. Then what happens is the MPI run command is going to reference Singularity and call Singularity. And Singularity is going to exec the MPI program which exists inside the container. At which point you'll end up with a communication vector going over uh, the PMI interface back to the original starting MPI run and the process statements. What you end up with is um, a fairly seamless integration of MPI and containers running at full bandwidth and um, pretty much no, um, no overhead that we've been able to determine aside from just a tear up and shut down uh, uh, overhead of building up a container and shutting down a container. Okay. Um, and uh, it is, does work as well, at least I've been told, with mpitch. Now mpitch, you need to install um, the DAPL and InfiniBand OFED stack into the container. Exactly. And so you're going to need to be somewhat aware of the um, the kernel API and the user land API. Now this is going to be the same, I would assume, for pretty much any container system at the moment. Uh, so this should work. I would assume this would work in the same in the same manner with Shifter, um, possibly Docker as well. Uh, but I'm not positive just because I don't I don't run them as much as I run Singularity. I just put on the slide where you have this Orchid D as a vertical bar and then the Singularity launcher. You know this uh, this uh, this picture that you sent me via this uh, Singularity yes. keynote. So within, or when I used it, then I had to start this audit daemon within the Docker container, right? That's a big difference here, right? That this audit daemon is part of the host system and it then forks or clones the Singularity container and within that you have the MPI application, right? So that's... Yeah, yes, difference. exactly. That's a, that is a very big difference, actually, in how how people I, uh, I believe are running this through Docker. Um, the, most the inter, most the um, uh, the implementations with Docker that I've seen, most people basically are creating a virtual cluster inside of their physical cluster, um, separating off the networks and whatnot for uh, for the for, Do for Docker, basically for the Docker containers, and then they communicate within the VLAN. Um, um, network that they build with with the Docker containers. So Singularity works as a very different perspective because, as you as you pointed out, the audit is outside of the container. It's actually the audit that's running on the physical node, and this is why you don't have to do things like worry about um, hosts and 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 where those hosts are, what the IP addresses of those hosts are, running an SSHD daemon inside of your container or anything like that. None of that is necessary. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cool. Cool. More questions with still a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, one. Um, in Docker, it's possible to, to have these layers to, to install in an image, um, the Red Hat 6, for example, and on top, uh, on top of that, create an image um, and install some application. Yeah. Is that also possible in Singularity? So in Docker, it's possible to then create another image which is based on the other layer, the Red Hat 6 for example, and this layer is shared between. Yeah, so yeah I think it's not. So that's that's what do you, possible in singularity? Do you, do you plan to support like an overlaying um, copyright file system, like this uh, layered file system approach? At the moment, I don't have any plans for doing that. Um, for, for branching a container and, um, and adding a, basically an overlay, it would be in, in singularity terms, it would be a very just basic, you copy your image and rename it, and then you work on the new image. So, there, But there's nothing like that um, in Singularity at present. And I'd be hard-pressed to, to, to even want to develop it, considering Docker does it so well. So I would probably tell people to, to utilize Docker for that sort of um, an interface, and then just import out of Docker, or import uh, into Singularity or export out of Docker your container images that you want to move into uh, your, your production HPC environment. Yeah, which which fits with this 
model that Shifter also does, right, where you have the development part which uses Docker and then you have your production environment, so to speak, the barrier between the two and then you, you shift to Shifter or use something else with, with behind this barrier. And yeah, I think that's, that's a good point. So reinventing the wheel and that you said in your talk as well, reinventing the wheel, well, it doesn't make sense, I think, there. And as I think Docker also will push out new features uh, on a monthly basis, as they did for the last couple of months and years. So if you create this yourself, then you have to chase this uh, all the time. And I think this won't, um, won't work out. Or it would be hard to, to come up with uh, solutions to the features that uh, Docker provides. So, yeah. so just coming back to the uh, MPI and all the daemon or comparable daemons running there. Um, am I right to assume that then I also have to run my scheduler like Slurm outside of the um, container, so native on the host, and then spawn my MPI process within this, these containers, and then the communication goes outside via the auto daemon and uh, or via Slurm to the auto daemons. Is it right? Or would it be so, a, a, the better idea to, to spawn your Slurm daemon somewhere in the container? Also? Uh, okay. I think I see what you're, what you're asking. So um, the idea behind Singularity is um, to fit in with current HPC architectures. So. I would assume if you're dealing with a, a cluster that is already in production, there's already going to be a resource manager there like Slurm yeah. um, or Torque or, or whatever, but you're going to have a resource manager already there. Now, to schedule on that system, if you were to run a standard MPI job, you basically would, would you know, call your S batch against a script, uh, against your batch script, and it would run that on the nodes, and your MPI command would be inside that, that batch script, right. and it would, it would run non-interactively. So with the singularity model, it is exactly the same. We're not going to run any other scheduling daemons. We're not going to run any other scheduling processes or uh, any other daemons whatsoever. We're basically just going to add into your MPI run command. We're going to inject basically the singularity command into that. Um, so basically, it's going to be MPI run. Um, and if you're running inside of Slurm, you basically don't need to specify any options because they're already within the Slurm environment. So MPI run space, singularity, uh, exec, the container name, and then whatever program and arguments that exist inside the container that you want to um, execute inside the container. Now, as long as that image file is available in all the nodes, for example, in a scratch file system or in your home directory, that MPI run command will run exactly as you would expect any MPI run command to, run, to work, except for it's going to be calling the program inside the container. So it makes it as absolutely um, simple and easy to integrate into an existing system as you can possibly imagine. Okay. And I put the screenshot of the ring run on the okay. screen. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Sure thing. Cool. I think that's it. Thank you for calling in. Oh, my pleasure. And if you got if anybody has any questions, um, there is a Google group for Singularity. Um, I'm also happy to answer any questions directly. So Christian, please feel free to hand out my contact info. Yeah, I think uh, if you need it, then um, you can find him online, or uh, you can ask me. I have his email as well. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for calling me in, Christian. Yeah, no worries. See you around. Have fun at ISC, everyone. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay, cool. So. We surpassed 6 p.m., so I think then uh, we should wrap it up. So thanks for attending, everyone. We have this raffle still, so if you want to put your card in there, it's a highly... Yeah, it's not, not that much cards, but okay, with the, with the cards already here. I will just throw it in, and then you point to some, to one. I'll just throw it here, and then this the one with the longest. Oh, we have to we have to make some. You should you just pick one. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's Bjorn Willenberg. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's yours.
you even ask us our question. <laughs> Contain yourself. <laughs> if nice, then uh, don't forget to do the survey so that we can do a full day workshop next year. And yeah, thanks. So you're going to make your slides available to us? Yeah, yeah, I will. So uh, we'll look for it, yeah. Um, I have this, this website. And I have even a card somewhere. Well, anyway, we have your name. We can find you. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And kill you. Really? Oh, okay, that's good. And then it's I will put the. I'll go back and try to review and really get it. And I even have the, some of the MPI examples that I mentioned. Like right. The, I, 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 I like to see it. I know it's a very long time. I have a remedy for that. Just don't say decompose. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Kind of language, trans tech, technology, and so on. So, what do you think? Uh,